Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our workshop entitled The Impending Economic Recession Ambush. We are so happy that you've decided to join us today, and we are excited to provide you with exclusive information and resources that will give you a deeper understanding of us and our services. My name is Emily, and I'm the Marketing Director for Clinkscale's Elder Law Practice. We are actually celebrating our 40 years in Hayes this year with our main office located here in town and our other office in Wichita, and we do serve clients and families throughout the entire state of Kansas. I would like to invite you all to type any questions you may have in the chat box that's located at the bottom of your screen throughout the entire presentation, and then at the end of the workshop, we will address any of those questions or concerns that you may have. So without any further ado, I would like to hand it over to our attorney and president, Randy Klinkscales, to get us started. Uh, thank you, Emily. Um, uh, this um, is kind of interesting to me. Um, we're going to get a, a tiny bit, a bit technical as we get into this. Um, we did this presentation, Emily, I don't recall how long ago, uh, a few months back, probably six months or so ago, uh, really had to update the the information here uh, because of some things that have happened. Uh, even, well, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Emily, before we go on, I, I'd like to make sure everybody can uh, see and hear the slides okay. If you would, if you can see and hear okay, uh, there's a chat box, type Y, if you can see okay. If you're having trouble uh, hearing or seeing, uh, type N for no, and let's just wait just a, a few seconds. Already have lots of whys coming through, Randy. So you're good to go. Okay. And then again, I think Emily mentioned <clears throat> if you have questions as we go along, um, uh, type them in the chat box. And at the end, I will do my best to address those uh, as best I can. So uh, again, we're talking about the impending economic recession ambush. Uh, let, let me just throw out a couple things to you. And 2016, the, the cost of living living adjustment for Social Security was 0%. In 2022, it jumped to 5.9%. In 2023, it jumped to 8.7%. Um, Medicare uh, B premiums have gone from $100 to $170 just to start off with. Um, when I first started in elder law uh, in uh, 18 years ago, uh, nursing home care costs were about $3,500, sometimes $4,000. Uh, now they're regularly seven to $10,000 a month. Uh, according to statistics for 2021, the average cost for home care is $24 an hour. That's that's 2021. Um, no, it's higher. <laughs> that works out to be $210,000 a month. Um, I have a friend that has a disabled child, and he was sharing with me that over and above the child's income, which is substantial from some other sources, uh, he's spending about $20,000 a month for home care. So, uh, you know, that, that those are the realities of, of what's going on today. Uh, you're going to discover there are important uh, components and considerations uh, to avoid the economic disaster, including ways to preserve and protect your assets uh, and how to avoid paying too much uh, money to the government and and ways to, to stay at home. Uh, and this is for you if you're wondering uh, if you're prepared for the changing economics that we're facing, uh, concerned that you're, you could live a long time uh, or develop a, an illness that could exhaust your assets, wondering if you, if you need some type of estate plan or whether your current plan is adequate, uh, wondering if you need some uh, concern about rising insurance, uh, medical 
uh, home care or long-term care costs, worried about your family and how can you protect them, wanting to pass on a business property or legacy, uh, uh, to, uh, or legacy to your family, and really, most importantly, how to stay at home. Um, we're going to take a, a really broad view of, of what what all we need to be doing versus if dealing with a, a current significant chronic illness, then we really need to hone down on some more specific solutions. So imagine if you could uh, wave a magic wand. Um, uh, these, are, these are the answers I get from a lot of my clients is they, they want to stay at home. Uh, they want to be sure that they have someone that will follow their wishes if they lose capacity. Um, uh, they want someone, they want to stay in control as long as possible. They want to protect uh, their money so that they can take care of themselves uh, and their family. And, and you know, I, I, I'm hearing that one a lot more uh, is, is a lot of people just want their resources uh, to maintain their resources so they can uh, live uh, with dignity uh, where they want to live and, and live independent, live independently. And then, if possible, pass on a legacy to their family, uh, not lose money because of government taxes, and not l worry about losing property to long-term care costs, and having peace of mind that everything is arranged. And, and, and let me let me just kind of talk about that last one just a little bit. My wife and I actually kind of had that conversation last night. And uh, those of you, uh, there was some, there was a blip in the stock market last night and we were looking around and, she, you know, her question was, is everything set up? And then she asked me, um, can you write out how I, I'm supposed to turn on the, the sprinklers? And, and so I, I actually did. Uh, and I, I think just you know just th that peace of mind about about how everything works and and is there is there some way that everything is supposed to happen uh, if something happens to us? This is from um, a client uh, that we worked with. That let me just read what she said. My husband has Parkinson's. You helped me keep him at home as long as possible. You showed me how to be a better caregiver. I could not have figured out how to pay for care with Medicare and Medicaid on my own. And she went on to say, this is from Sherry, I highly recommend uh, clean scale elder law practice. And, and Sherry uh, was, uh, her husband was an older, was older than she, and, and she really was a good caregiver, but she was uh, overwhelmed by uh, everything that was going on with him. So who, who are we? Who is my, who is this firm? Um, uh, we have three partners, uh, myself, Jenny Walters, and Adam Deese. Uh, we're an elder care firm. Uh, we focus on helping families preserve uh, and protect their dignity, dignity, health, finances, and legacy. Uh, we practice throughout uh, Kansas, and we have offices in Wichita and Hayes, and we began our practice in 1983. Now, Jenny and Adam weren't around because they weren't born then, uh, but but I've been around since uh, that time. And who am I? Um, again, I'm an, an elder care attorney, and and my practice is really focused on aging and chronic care issues, and protection of assets. Um, I've been practicing for over forty years. Uh, the last eighteen years have been the best as I started focusing on elder care. Uh, this is my family, uh, my, my three sons, uh, my daughter-in-law, my two grandsons, and then, of course, the love of my, my life, my, my wife there in the middle. So why am I so passionate, and how did I get here? Uh, so my journey uh, was that I was a general practitioner um, uh, practicing in Kansas. My grandmother uh, lived in Wichita, as did my mom. Uh, my grandmother was 86. Uh, my mother uh, passed away. Um, my mother had been my grandmother's caregiver. And so suddenly, 
I was a caregiver for my grandmother. And so I started on that journey with her. Uh, I took care of her for, uh, I oversaw her care and took care of her for 10 years. And I learned a lot from her. Uh, what I learned from her is that her big goal uh, was not about me drafting a whole bunch of great legal documents for her. It was about helping her maintain her independence, uh, helping her stay out of the nursing home, uh, helping her preserve her resources so she could maintain the lifestyle that she wanted. And I also learned that I, even though I was the lawyer, I needed assistance uh, to be able to make good decisions for her, uh, to tap in to community resources uh, and so forth. I learned I couldn't do it alone. I had to have a team uh, and uh, that form documents were not the answers. Uh, that that uh, uh, we had to be flexible in, in her journey. Uh, just uh, sh I'll share with you that twice she was on hospice. Um, and once we got a good plan together, they kicked her off a of hospice and and she did really well. And then she lived to, to be 96. Um, so again, as I said, it was a, a wonderful journey. And really we model our our practice after that journey with her. But let me let me talk to you a little bit about, my grandma's been gone for a while, over 10 years. Um, but the wonderful part of that is I got to transition that passion uh, into my practice. And uh, I have families that come to me with uh, complex issues, um, uh, whether it's health, estate, or tax. Uh, but uh, you know we get to see, and uh, and typically we can combine all of those into one solution, uh, and and it's it's the the, the passion comes from seeing the results uh, in their lives. So this is uh, Mr. Woods. I want to read what he said. When my wife got sick and needed the nursing home, I was told I would have to sell my home and my farm. I thought I would go broke. Randy saved the farm for me and my children. Uh, that was one of my very early cases. And uh, I actually, Mr. Woods is now deceased and uh, we were able to protect the farm for uh, uh, his son. And his son's now uh, working with our office. So uh, a comprehensive plan is going to, uh, a plan will help you avoid economic crisis, uh, protect you and your wishes and provide for your uh, family and legacy. So today I, I want you to, just a couple things I want to jump point out to you. It's really a lot more about form or cookie cutter estate planning documents. Uh, so many times, and, and again, it happened uh, uh, a couple times yesterday in some meetings. Uh, someone says, oh, I have, um, I have a healthcare power of attorney. And it's some form that they were given by a hospital or pulled off the internet. Uh, and it's so much more about a form or a cookie cutter estate plan. It, it, it really needs to go uh, far beyond that. Uh, the sec and why? Because it, it's really not uh, it's really not what happens uh, when you die, but what happens if you live a long time. And it's important, I, again, another family I was visiting with yesterday, uh, that I, I want them to decide what their goals are uh, and, and what needs to be protected and how to protect uh, their family members and how to pay for care. I don't want a court to decide that. Uh, I, I don't, I want them to understand that they don't have to go broke if they need long-term care. And I think it's important that they understand there are ways to avoid uh, unnecessary taxes because if you don't plan, uh, you know, the government's going to love you because you're going to pay a whole bunch of uh, taxes. And, and uh, while the rest of us appreciate your paying taxes, if there's a way to avoid that or minimize that, that's what, we, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. And it's important to express your desire and ways to stay at home. So let's start with number one. Uh, and so today I, I, I'm actually going to give you real life examples 
uh, I'm not going to show you statutes or or lecture you or that sort of thing. Uh, I, I I just I want to. There's one section I've got to go through a, a couple laws, but but most of it, mostly I, I really want to give you some uh, uh, real life examples, either that have occurred in our office or uh, you know out in the out in the real world. So there are some important components of your estate plan uh, that need to be included. There are fundamental documents that express that need to express your wishes. So as an example, uh, I have uh, a healthcare power of attorney that expresses my desires it, it, uh, about what kind of care I want if I have dementia. Uh, I have uh, expressions in there, what happens if uh, I don't have a quality of life and what, what does that mean? Uh, so I express that in, in, my, in my documents. Um, I, it's important that my all of my plan uh, designates beneficiaries correctly, so I can have the best estate planning documents in the world. But if my beneficiaries are not set up correctly, it doesn't matter. Uh, my estate plan is not going to be carried out. So if I have a will that leaves everything to my wife but my accounts are set up to go to my sons, my wife gets nothing. And that's a terrible example, but that's what's going to happen. There are ways I can protect family members. I've got a couple of grandkids. I want to have something. I want them to be sure, I want to be sure that they get something if something happens to their dad, my son. Um, and special needs planning is important. It's more important today than it's ever been because there are some real tax benefits, uh, real planning opportunities out there uh, for people with, with special needs. So this is just kind of a current case. Uh, uh, many of you know, Ann Hecht died recently and I won't get into uh, the, how wonderful or bad she was, but she died in 2022. Uh, she did not have a will or a trust. She was not married. She had two children, 13 and 20, uh, because she did not have a will. Everything is going to pass under what's called intestate law. There is quite the battle going on on who is going to control the money. Uh, there, there's a, a process going on about appointing a, what's called a guardian and conservatorship for the 13 year old uh, and should the 20 year old be that guardian conservator. Um, there's $4 million um, on and on and on. And so uh, again, uh, you know, my argument would have been to Anne that I, you know, it, it would have been so much easier if she would have made some decisions about uh, how that would have worked. And, and so again, I always argue with my clients, you know, you decide versus somebody else to uh, decide. Uh, I want to, this is a, a, a case uh, that um, came to our office, uh, got changed the name, uh, uh, the Jackson 66 and 69. Um, Mr. Jackson still working. Uh, she, Mrs. Jackson's retired. Uh, they have a home and family business. Investments and retirement funds are four hundred thousand uh, dollars. They set up the funds to pay to each other and then to all four children. Both of them are relatively healthy, but they have no estate plan. Um, kind of a weird situation. Uh, their son Bud is married with two children and he works in the business and hopes to take it over and they want him to take it over. Their son Mark is deceased and has a special needs child, even though his name is still on their account. Uh, daughter Debbie is going through a divorce and has a child. Uh, daughter Barbara has been in, in and out of a drug rehab program, is divorced and has two children 
who live with their father. And again, they want the business to stay in the family, but they want to be fair to all the children and want to avoid litigation. And they hope something will go to the grandchildren one day. Now, let's talk about if they do nothing. Uh, so a lot of people don't understand Kansas is one of four states that if you do not have a power of attorney, um, so if my wife does not have a power of attorney for me, if I lose capacity, there's no law that gives her a right to act for me, none. She would have to go to court and get a guardian conservatorship to, the, to make healthcare decisions and financial decisions. So if one of Mr. and Mrs. Jackson lost capacity, nothing would happen. Uh, they, they, they would have to go to court to get something done. Um, if, if they died, they would have to go through probate. Uh, under intestate law, everything would be divided equally among the four children. Um, uh, the business would end up be divided four ways. The property could be lost to the divorce. Uh, the Barb's drug issues could eat up her share of the divorce. Uh, the disabled child could be disqualified from benefits. Uh, investments uh, could end up going to the children. And under Kansas, uh, uh, if the child is under 18, they can't own more than $40,000 without a conservatorship. So in this case, we put together solid powers of attorneys with good agent, and we added 14 additional powers. We put health care desires in their powers of attorneys. We set up a revocable trust. So that means a trust that you can amend. Uh, and it allows for management and avoidance of probate so they don't have to go to court. We set the business aside for Bud in the revocable trust. And we explain why. And the idea there was to explain to the other kids and also to avoid probate. We set it up so Deb's, Debbie's interest, uh, inheritance from her divorce, I'm sorry, Debbie's inheritance was protected from her divorce so that she did not lose her inheritance uh, in, in the divorce case. We set up a special needs trust for Mark's child so that the child stayed on benefits, no guardianship was, was or conservatorship was, was necessary, and there were money, there was money there for that child. We also protected Barb's inheritance from her drug program, her drug problems, uh, and also set it up so that uh, there would be money for her children and would not be lost to their father. And we corrected all the beneficiary designations. And so, you know, kind of the, the question when the Jacksons came in to us was, or their statement was, we don't know where to where to start. Uh, and and so the the other comment I also like is is we don't know what we don't know. And and so it was kind of nice to help them through when they're they're open like that and don't have a, a preconceived idea about what has to be done. And it just uh, uh, allowing them to talk and find out what all is going on and asking follow up questions about. Uh, what what's going on family wise, and so I know a lot of times when I'm talking with families, I spend a lot of time talking about health issues. I talk about what's going on with kids because all of that is important in the in the process of what what's the best uh, plan for that family. Um, here's another one: we don't know what we don't know. Um, it, Mr. and Mrs. Brown came in. They've been married 42 years. Uh, they have a farm. Uh, some is in joint tenancy. Some in, is in Mrs. Brown's name. They have an oil working interest in just his name. They have three children. They assumed everything would go to the other spouse, and the spouse would have the ability to make financial and health care decisions. Uh, if 
but in actual actuality, uh, if one of them died, the joint property would go to the survivor, but the other property would be probated, one half to the spouse and one half to the children. And we actually had this case uh, out in Western Kansas. Um, they actually had been in to see us, didn't go forward, went out, husband died, and it was a, a real mess. We had to go help them through a very complicated probate process, uh, had to get property back from the kids. Uh, it, it caused a bunch of family uh, problems. Uh, part, um, oh, I just kind of, they were kind of angry at mom. And anyway, uh, got, get, finally got the property back in mom's name because she really needed the income. Um, so our conversation with the family was uh, we needed a power of attorney and, and who who would that be? Who did they trust? We talked about setting up a revocable trust. And again, that's a trust that can be amended. Uh, it helps avoid probate. Uh, we compared that to a will. Is a will appropriate or is the revocable trust more appropriate? We even talked about setting up an irrevocable trust. Uh, we could put the land into an irrevocable trust uh, that would provide some protection from uh, some protection that would provide protection from lawsuits. It would pro provide protection from uh, long-term care costs. Uh, we talked about LLC, uh, maybe some life insurance. Uh, we also talked about long-term care insurance. Is that is that appropriate for this family? Uh, you know, we talked about financial planning and getting their financial planner involved, and we talked about the the uh, dynamics of the family. So here's the here's the idea here that I want you to think about. It's important to have a discussion with your elder law attorney. Big picture, it's not about just creating documents. Uh, you know, I I recently, in fact, these are some friends of mine. Uh, came to see me, and they had uh, a very uh, sophisticated, um, uh, if you will, estate plan um, that had been done years ago, and they asked me to look it over, and I discovered in the process that they really didn't know what was in, in their plan. Uh, and when I went through it with them and asked them some questions about why are you doing this or why are you doing that, um, um, they didn't know. Um, and so, um, it, it, you know, again, having that meaningful discussion about what's in the plan, why is it there, uh, do you need something else, um, I, I think is, is uh, terribly important. So what do you need to do uh, is... is uh, we're going to talk about how to schedule a strategy session with our office uh, to address the, this type of issue. So our next one is uh, there are ways to preserve and protect your assets from costs associated with aging from uh, at-home care to nursing home care. And with planning, you can protect what's important to you. Uh, you can make decisions on how to pay for care. You don't have to go broke if you need long-term care. And you're going to learn that you can use government benefits to pay for care, such as Medicare, VA, and Medicaid. So let's talk about using uh, planned resources to pay for care. And this is a, uh, an example I, I like to use because we got to use a couple different tools that sometimes people don't think about. And so, this is actually uh, a tool um, that the Johnsons had in place. Uh, and so the tool was they had Medicare uh, already and they had long-term care insurance. Um, and, um, but they weren't using them properly. And so in this case, uh, uh, let, me, let me just tell you, uh, Mr. Johnson had had a stroke and was in the hospital, and he needed to be discharged. Um, uh, Mrs. Johnson uh, gave us a call, 
uh, and wanted to know what uh, they needed to do. They were about to discharge Mr. Johnson to a nursing home that was not a skilled facility. And by the way, the nursing home that they were going to discharge him to, by the way, I just learned was is now going to close. But anyway, um, they were going to discharge him to a, a non-skilled facility. The problem is that if they did, then he was going to have to privately pay uh, for that. Uh, he did have long-term care insurance that would pay $200 a day, but only for three years. The second problem would be that he would not be getting skilled care. And he had had a stroke and he really needed skilled care to get better. Those of you that have ever dealt with anybody with a stroke know that the skilled care uh, it, after a stroke is just absolutely critical uh, uh, to, uh, to, to the road of recovery. So we helped transition Mr. Johnson uh, to a skilled facility. Uh, and in fact, uh, it, we actually worked with him to get uh, uh, not only into a skilled facility, but to get his Medicare days extended. Uh, and Medicare paid for that time at, for a lot of that time at the skilled facility. Uh, we used the long-term care for a period of time, but we also used the long-term care policy uh, to pay for some uh, uh, home improvements uh, so that he could transition to home and be safe at home. So. The early involvement did four things. It got uh, Medicare benefits extended. It got the health improvement that Mr. Johnson needed. Uh, he was able to return home. The long-term uh, policy was extended protecting assets. And I will tell you also, Mr. Johnson's still at home and, and is uh, fairly independent. But I would suggest to you that if he had not had skilled care and our intervention, I don't think that he ever would have come home. So again, it, it was actually just tapping in to what these folks had and, and advocating for them. Uh, talk about Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt. Again, this are, these are using some existing resources, uh, 72 and 70. Uh, and this is a phone call from their children. Um, they had bought some uh, long-term care insurance. Uh, it was only $3,200 a month. Uh, I think it was three years. Uh, they were not, it was fairly expensive. They were aware that um, it was not enough. Um, and so they came to see me. Uh, here are the facts. They're 72 and 70. She has, he had 350,000 in an IRA. She had 200,000 in an IRA. That's 300,000 in an investment. Um, they're concerned about going broke if one of them needs long-term care. Uh, one of their objections to the policy that they had was that they're going to pay on it and pay on it. And if they don't use it, then they're going to lose it. They're going to lose all the money they put into it. So we found a, what I call a hybrid life insurance policy. And so we took $150,000, I think, out of Mr. Schmidt's IRA. We bought a $250,000 um, life insurance policy. And it had a $7,000 a month long-term care rider on it. And it was for the joint life of Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt. If they had a claim against it, then a, a, a long-term uh, care claim against it, all it did is reduce the death benefit. Several features that are important. Uh, if there's money left on the life insurance, then their family gets that, number one. Number two, uh, there's no more premiums. Number three, the benefits are much better. <laughs> number four, 
uh, it was a tax-free exchange and the money comes out tax-free. So uh, the, the, the Smiths were really, really happy that we were able to um, uh, you know, point them in the right direction. But again, it's just having the conversation about what do they need and, and what, what might be a, a proper solution for them. And, and again, it's really taken more of a holistic approach to, it's not just about uh, legal documents. And then one, one more, uh, uh, this is a little bit just more of a pre-planning uh, uh, approach. Um, so actually we were called uh, by the Lundgren family from uh, a neurologist office and they were in to see this neurologist and uh, she suggested they call us. Um, so uh, he was, Mr. Lundgren was diagnosed, he was in his early 60s, diagnosed with uh, uh, early signs of dementia. Uh, and I, I, I think the words were early cognitive decline, but he's still a very active farmer and has capacity. Uh, he's very concerned about what's going to happen if years from now he needs care and he's concerned for his wife and his children. Um, and they had some farm ground, um, uh, and, and, and it was important to him. Uh, and so what we, you know, his comment to me was, I want to stay in control, but I want to be sure my wife and my land are protected. So in essence, he wanted to farm. So we set up broad powers of attorneys. Uh, we put his land into an irrevocable trust. We added uh, uh, his care instructions to his health to his health care power of attorney, and met with his agents so they know his wishes. And the results were the is that though there may be several years before Mr. Lundgren uh, ever needs health assistance, his goal or his goals are achieved through his plan set forth in his documents. His land's protected. He re remains in control and, for, and, and can continue to farm. Uh, if at some point uh, he can no longer uh, farm and needs assistance, his wife has power to further protect resources. Uh, his decisions about what kind of care he wants are protected, which takes pressure off of pressure and guilt off his family. One other thing I want to share about that with you is that when I first met with the Lundgrens on kind of an emergency basis, uh, it was a very solemn meeting. Um, and when we met, uh, by the end of the meeting, uh, I really had a, a pretty good idea about what we could do. Uh, our care coordinator met with him. Um, and we 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 kind of outlined the plan. Um, in a few weeks, he came back to sign. The language came back, and we went through the plan and so forth. Uh, it was a completely different meeting. Uh, he he and Mr. And Mrs. Lundgren were so much more relaxed and kind of joking around. I think they realized it was not um, that they had a lot of time. Uh, that they had a plan. Uh, she was much more relaxed that, um, you know, they were on a journey and um, things were going to change, uh, but 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 he was going to be okay. She was going to be okay. And their children were going to be okay. And their farm was going to be protected. So um, it was just interesting watching that uh, uh, shift in dynamics along the way. And now I, I, I do want to talk about uh, uh, crisis planning using Medicaid. Uh, and so, you know, I, I know we've talked about some cases where we, we've had some opportunity to, to play the plan uh, in advance and, and have some resources to, to uh, plan around with. Um, but I, 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 sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get into... Uh, uh, a terrible crisis, and so let me let me share this one with you. And this is not atypical. Um, 
So uh, Mrs. Reed contacted our office. Um, uh, another client had recommended she call us. Her husband has cancer. Uh, he had been diagnosed, I'm sorry, discharged to a nursing home. Uh, he is paying $8,000 a month. Uh, their assets include included her $80,000 IRA, a home, and a joint account of $60,000. So not much, not much at all. Um, that she was told by the nursing home uh, that she would need to spend down all the resources for Medi before Medicaid would help and Medicaid would put a lien on her home. And she was worried that once her husband went on Medicaid, he would not get good care. Um, so using Medicaid rules, uh, we got Mr. Me Mr. Reed on Medicaid. Uh, we set it up so Mrs. Reed was able to keep all of her assets and all of her income. Uh, we, she kept all of her IRA and all of the joint account. She was able to keep the home and no lien was placed on it. Uh, I, I want to also add that um, if Mr. Reed had been a wartime veteran, the v VA benefits would have been available up to $2,200 a month tax-free. And, and again, that's just something that we would explore with all of our clients uh, to look at their look at their their war history if they've served during what's called a wartime, and that's defined by the VA uh, rules. So what do you need to do? Again, what are we talking about here? Talking about um, uh, ways to preserve and protect your assets from costs associated with aging. Schedule a, a strategy session as soon as possible. But again, our goal is to find, get, and pay for good care without going broke. And again, I, let me go back to, to Mrs. Reed for a minute because I want you to know that we we began working with supervising uh, uh, Mr. Reed's care in the nursing home and reporting to Mrs. Reed about uh, the kind of care he was getting and advocating for for him. And, and I know that was great peace of mind for her. So let's I'm gonna go to to Pat for a minute. Uh, and Pat, I I like to talk about Pat. Um, uh, Pat came to us at a, a tough time in her life. Uh, her husband, uh, they lived out of state. Uh, he was uh, going downhill. She moved to Kansas. Uh, she was, they were from Kansas. She moved back to Kansas to, to be near some family that she thought could help her take care of her husband. He progressed much, much rap more rapidly than than she anticipated. Uh, she just couldn't care for him very long. Uh, we you know worked with her and worked with her. Um, finally, uh, he had to go into the nursing home. When I first met her, she was terribly bitter about the the hand that had been dealt her. Uh, after working with her for quite a while, she really became one of my favorite clients and was so appreciative of the of the help and guidance that that uh, that we were able to give her. And I, I just want to share this note always means a lot to me. Uh, my husband needed nursing home care. You guided me through the process. Your care coordinators uh, made sure my husband was getting good care. I highly recommend you because you're always there for your clients and will guide them through everything that goes on, things we never expected to go through. And I, and I hear that so much from my clients about, we just never expected to be here in our lives. And you know that's what we're here for, is to help people and guide them through uh, that, that stage, through these, uh, on this journey, through those stages. So let's talk about this one. Don't pay unnecessary taxes. And so 
Um, let me just share with you that the last time that I gave this presentation, the Secure Act two point, the, the Secure Act had been passed, and now the Secure Act two point has been passed. So let's let's talk a little bit about the changes that I want you to be aware of, uh, and some changes that may be coming. Um, uh, so and some of these affect some of you and uh, now, and, and some of these are going to affect some of this, some of this is gonna affect some of you later on. Um, IRA uh, uh, required minimum distributions are going to be changing. Uh, they're going to be scaled. Um, uh, this year it's going to 73. Uh, people born after 1960 is going to be pushed up to 75. Um, uh, there, right now, there's no required minimum distribution for Ross. Eventually, there's not going to be required minimum distributions for 401k. Roths inside 401k. So right now there is. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, so you don't have to start pulling them out and they can continue to grow. So even if I leave, if I have a Roth uh, 401k, uh, Roth inside a 401k, I can leave it to my wife and she does not have to take any required minimum distributions. Uh, now, when we leave it to our children, they will. There are some um, uh, major catch-up uh, contribution provisions for 401ks and 403bs. Um, you can now roll a 529 plan um, you can, uh, into a Roth IRA. Uh, you've got to have had it for 15 years. Um, Again, you can delay withdrawals more now. Uh, there are special beneficiaries. Uh, let, me, let me back up for a minute. Uh, many of you may be aware that um, under the new rules, um, um, that basically you have to pull a IRA out in 10 years, unless you're the original person that set it up or the spouse of that person. So if you if I leave it to my children or my grandchildren, they have to put it out within 10 years. There are some special beneficiaries that don't. Um, children under 18, uh, children with special needs. Um, those are, there are special rules for that. We're seeing a lot more, even in my office, we're doing a lot more um, uh, designating a trust as a beneficiary of an IRA and allowing the trust to make up the rules on how the, the money is to be di distributed. There's increased uh, benefits to using uh, charitable distributions um, up to $100,000 using IRA monies. Um, that $100,000 is going to be indexed. Okay. I, again, for some of you, that's terribly boring. Uh, and I'm sorry, but I, I just want to make you aware of that. Uh, we still are dealing with capital gains and how to avoid that. Um, some of you that are on the line, I've, I've talked with you about uh, how we can avoid those uh, by using trust. Um, we have to be careful because uh, capital gains can trigger increased Medicare taxes um, or Medicare uh, monthly premiums. Your Medicare uh, premiums can go from hundred and I think 165 or 170 dollars a month to over 500 if your income goes up 
if your income goes over 200,000, you can get hit with a, a health care surtax. Um, one thing I, I, this is a big deal. Um, the federal estate tax right now is almost $13 million. Uh, so an, you're, you don't have to pay taxes if your estate does not exceed that amount that is scheduled to go to $6 million, five point something million dollars in 2000, at the end of 2025, okay? That's a year away, two years away. So frankly, right now I have some clients and we're transferring away property. Why? Because capital gains taxes are a lot less than estate taxes. I have a client right now with probably $12 million in land. If he were to die in 2026 and that $6 million over the $6 million, 45% of that would go for tax, would be paid in taxes. So it, it makes a lot more sense to transfer away property right now. Uh, and because this kid's kid probably won't ever sell it. And so uh, if he doesn't, then we don't have to worry about the capital gain. So I, I'm just saying some planning needs to be done. Let's talk about some unknowns. Um, tax credit extended, um, tax rate valued on income of, of 400,000, uh, maybe capital gains eliminated, most likely not. Um, capital gains amount increase, that's very possible. Um, there's something called a IRA super rollover uh, that's, that's really at risk, but as of today, that's still there. Now, so let's, let's kind of get into some, let's get away from all that boring stuff. Uh, again, let's talk about a, a, a specific case. So uh, this is the Augustine family. Uh, they wanted to transition their farm to their children. Uh, they were going to sell it to them. Uh, my concern was the capital gains taxes uh, and then the taxes that the children wanted to buy each other out. I was concerned about them losing control. I was concerned about their Medicare premiums going up, uh, the surtax of 3.8%. Our solution, we, we placed the land into an irrevocable trust. Uh, we gave the income to the children, though. Uh, the, still, the children will still get a step, step up in basis when Mr. and Mrs. Augustine pass away. We retained the right in Mr. and Mrs. Augustine to change the beneficiaries in case something were to happen to one of the kids or they go through some kind of uh, financial difficulties or marital difficulties or whatever. Uh, there's no tax consequences for the Augustines. There's no surtax or increased Medicare premium. Uh, they had a special needs grandchild. They we, we actually started rolling over some of their IRA into a Roth IRA. The advantage of that is that as they turn 60, I'm sorry, as they uh, uh, start getting to the age of, of uh, required minimum distributions, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Augustine don't have to take money out of that Roth IRA, so it can continue to grow and grow and grow, and then they can leave that to their uh, special needs grandchild. It'll be a much larger number than if it's just a straight IRA. Uh, and so the grandchild will get a lot more money. Uh, and, and so just some planning idea there, just to give you some examples. So now let's talk about my, one of my favorites is how to stay at home. And so it's really, um, um, it's not about the home uh, versus the nursing home. Uh, and it's a planning, uh, use, planning, planning used to focus on what happens when I die, uh, but it really needs to be uh, what happens if I live a long time and need care. 
I, I just want, want to, I know this sounds abstract, but I, I want you to know that um, uh, as my kids have done for on and off for the last few years, since we got Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs, uh, they come home uh, Super Bowl weekend uh, from across the country and and we have quite the weekend. And uh, but we had this discussion and and, you know, about, you know, what what do I want to happen and that sort of thing. And of course, they make these outrageous promises that I don't know that I, I would keep hold them to. But, you know, it's important to have uh, those discussions. Um, so, again, my my lessons that I learned were from my grandmother uh, and she didn't have a lot of money. Um, she had a home, sixty thousand uh, dollars, but her goal was to live live independently. Uh, her her comment to me was, and I repeat it probably once a week, honey, I know someday I'll have to go to a nursing home. I just don't want to know about it. And I think her idea there was as long as she was cognitive, she was really she was willing to take the risk uh, and and live independently. And so uh, she did live independently for about six years. And then she spent about, um, I'm sorry, for four years. And then she spent about six years in assisted living. Um, and the lesson there that with proper guidance and with the proper team, uh, you can stay at home longer. Uh, transitions can be gradual. Uh, support for the caregiver, and that's me, uh, is critical. Uh, and Resources can be stretched to achieve your goals. So again, if you're talking about uh, how to stay at home uh, and how to do that, uh, schedule a strategy session. Um, if, if you're concerned about developing aging or chronic care issues and, and don't wait, the longer you wait, the greater the crisis and the more limited the options and don't give up their solutions. And again, it's about having that conversation with, with us. Um, this is JB, very stoic farmer, um, helped work through a crisis with his wife until she passed. And, and I felt very comfortable with everyone I worked with. Plink Scales helped us through some very hard years. So, so far you've discovered you can avoid economic disaster. There are important components and considerations for your long-term plan. There are ways to preserve and protect your assets. And if you need long-term care, you don't have to go broke and you can avoid paying unnecessary taxes to the government. With proper care and planning, you can delay or avoid nursing home, allowing you to stay at home longer. So I hope you get this. Proper planning with an expert elder law attorney allows you to achieve your long range goals and protect your wishes, your family, and your property and avoid economic disaster. So it's not about your, it's not about form documents. It's about having the conversation. So how do you make that happen? So important components and considerations for your long-term plan. There are ways to protect and protect your assets, preserve and protect your assets. Don't pay unnecessary taxes to the government. There are ways to stay at home. So how does this work? You know, I, I guess my comment to you is that sometimes people are afraid to call the office because the problem is either too little or too big, or it's too early or it's too late. So my suggestion to you is call the office and let us talk to you for a few minutes to see if there's something that we can help you with. And if it is in that short phone call, then we will go to the next level and schedule a 60 to 90 minute strategy session that can be in person or by Zoom or by telephone with me or one of uh, the other uh, partners. And at that, we'll talk about what's going on uh, and, and talk about your unique situation. And at the end of our time together, you'll have better clarity about what your issues are and, and what your goals are. And I, I find that that's always true. I, I, you know, people come in thinking there's one thing that's going on and then they find out there's really a lot more. 
And at the end of our time together, we'll know exactly what needs to be done and what the investment is going to be uh, to achieve what your goals are. So what's the next step? After our meeting, you'll decide to get started. And I think that's the, the most important goal is just deciding to get started. And we'll develop a plan and we'll, we'll schedule another meeting. Uh, we'll get everything drafted. Uh, after things are signed, then uh, the next step is getting everything arranged and funded. Uh, and we'll work with you to get all the other tools and steps in place. But most importantly, we're going to walk you through the process from start to finish. So the session is free because you attended this today. What's the catch? We've scheduled uh, six spots in the next four weeks. Uh, if you want to schedule a strategy session, call this number. Uh, we do have another one of these sessions this afternoon. Uh, so call this number or Emily is going to send you a survey monkey you can cl click on. Uh, and my guarantee is you're going to know more after that strategy session than you do right now. Uh, you'll have an analysis of what happens if you do nothing, and your time's not going to be wasted. So call this number, 877-325-8040, or respond to the Survey Monkey. And, and you'll get uh, uh, this free book, What You Really Need to Know for the Second Half of Life, and I wrote a chapter in it. Um, and so, again, remember a free strategy session, an analysis of your current plan, a free written report, and, and the book. So, Emily, I'm going to turn this over to you. I know I ran a little bit long. Yes, uh, thank you to everyone who has stayed on this long and stayed with us here. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box at this moment, but please do feel free to add your question now as we go ahead and wrap up our presentation this afternoon. And I do want to kindly remind everyone that you will receive that follow-up email Randy mentioned that contains the important things. It will contain a recording of this session, and we provide that to you so you can share that with other family members, friends, or colleagues that weren't able to make this session today, or so you can just go back through and take notes on all the important topics that Randy mentioned. The other thing that email contains is that SurveyMonkey link, and I did already put it in the chat box for you to complete. And if you fill out that quick survey, you'll receive the completely free strategy session where you'll speak with one of our attorneys about your unique situation. And I do want to just reiterate that you can call our office anytime at the 877 number on your screen. If you have any questions regarding that session or just any questions about your situation, we're always happy to chat and set you up with that free consultation with the attorney. I would also like to invite you to stay up to date on our upcoming events on our website. Um, our next workshop will be May 23rd, How to Save the Farm, and that is another virtual online workshop. Um, so you can sign up with that via emailing me or um, on our website at clinkscaleslaw.com. Um, I don't see any questions at this moment, but if you think of any, please call us, email us, and we'll be very happy to answer all those questions. So thank you everyone for joining today. Um, thank you, Randy, for sharing that great information and have a great day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Randy.